this is Jennifer with Women Loving Jesus. Today we are on Proverbs 13, 19. A desire fulfilled is sweet to the soul, but to turn away from evil is an abomination to fools. When I first read this scripture, I was thinking maybe this was going to be almost a verse talking about two different things. But after studying it, um, it really is something that is saying, it comes together and is saying a complete sentence. And to put it in today's terms, what it's saying is someone is clinging to evil, the plans of Satan. And by clinging to the plans of Satan, then they are not following God's desire and they are not receiving that sweetness of um, fulfillment that God gives when we follow him. What I have found when we look at the Bible, right, and he starts to try to get us to mature in Christ and follow him, there are things that he tells us in the Bible that basically, this is good for you to follow. Now it is your choice. Um, and it is a sin if you don't follow it. But if you follow it, it is good and it's following the path I have for you. Now, one of those things that I can use an example is... In the Bible, it talks about we are not supposed to be drunk. We're not supposed to be high. We're not supposed to have that altered state. Now, praise the Lord, through his grace, I have not had to struggle with personal addiction myself. Have I seen it in family members? Yes, intensively. As a therapist, has, have I seen it and heard the struggles from others? Yes. Now, for me, it was... When I, I remember, I didn't drink all the way through middle school and high school. I didn't even have a sip of alcohol until I was in college. And to me, it never really tasted that good. Um, and so it was probably an easier struggle to deal with because I didn't think it tasted good. And even when I drank a little bit through college, I, I never got to state of going overboard and really enjoying it. Um, so praise God that that isn't something that I've had to deal with. God has me dealing with other things. It doesn't mean that I'm better than someone else. But I can use this example because I've seen what it, it does to other people. And I can see because I've God has helped me to choose his pathway of not being drunk, how there has been a fulfillment of, of sweetness in my life. And part of that is after years of continuing to follow the path of evil or a time frame that you continue to say yes to evil, no to God, what happens is it develops all sorts of other problems. With alcohol, for instance, we're just going to use that. Because to be honest with you, it is legal to drink alcohol. It is legal to get drunk. Um, it is available everywhere. <laughs> You can find alcohol easily if you have the money for it. You can even go to people's homes and they're offering it to you for free. So this is something, and also it is a very much part of our culture, which means that we find messages relating to alcohol, images relating to alcohol and videos on every type of screen that we have telling us that it is acceptable and it is fun. And it is normal to participate in this type of drinking and to enter into that altered drunk state. Well, what God says is that's not good for you. And what we do know that maybe isn't so much expressed in our culture is that alcohol can have serious consequences. You can have um, a DUI. You can kill someone. You can end up in prison for manslaughter if you do kill someone for drinking and driving. Uh, you can kill yourself. For it. Um, it, drinking causes long-term health problems, cirrhosis of the liver. You can die from that. There's other issues, stomach issues, um, cognitive issues, uh, mood-related issues because of long-term use of alcohol. It can cause a lot of social uh, situations uh, where family members, it creates uh, division. It creates fights. It creates conflict. Financial problems can get very expensive drinking every day or on the weekends and it can also create problems dealing with life 
I'm not sitting on a stressful day looking at the clock, waiting until I can have a drink to feel better. Uh, praise the Lord, um, by God's grace, I can pray at any moment, even in my mind, and just say, Lord, help me through whatever stress I'm going through that day. And I can have that sweetness and that relief without paying for something, without having to go and grab it, without ingesting it in my body. And that is the sweetness of it. And I can... I can ask God for help in prayer um, every second of the day. Um, I, I can do it in my head, and maybe people don't realize that I am praying constantly throughout the day. Always free, always available. The Lord can give me that, and it can give that sweetness, that satisfaction that alcohol is not going to give. Now, if I have chosen to follow evil, I'm going to keep going to alcohol instead of God. Alcohol may give me something but it doesn't compare to an answered prayer. And if you can think about an answer prayer you've ever received or been part of, you understand that sweetness. So I pray that the word of God today has taken um, the scripture and has encouraged you. And I thank you for listening.